Sport next with Ken. Out of the Sharks, this time against the Tigers. Mark, 64 points have been scored against them in their last two games. In contrast, only a point separated the Raiders and the Dragons. Also, South Africa's running rugby sinks the Wallabies. The Canberra Raiders stopped the rot today, ending a three-game losing streak, defeating the Dragons in a thriller at Jubilee Stadium. Deep in the horrors, the Sharks received a 44-12 hiding from the Tigers, while the Raiders showed plenty of grit to hold out the Dragons by just a point. A bad miss by Wiki gave Wiltshire the opening points, but Canberra quickly hit back. The defence took the decoys, and O'Hara had the first try for the year. Michael Monaghan then gave Mogg his chance, and it took a unique play from Riddell to get the Dragons back into the game. Slow start to the second half saw the Dragons slip behind again. But little separated the teams throughout. Canberra home by the narrowest of margins. Denied any form of points last week, the Sharks were desperate this week, but so were the Tigers. Through O'Neill and Halatau, the Tigers cross first. And if not for a lucky bounce, they would have soon had the second. Gets an awkward bounce. The Tigers didn't miss their next chance. Poor defence allowed Galea to show his skills. Withers finished off the rest. Puts the kick in for Withers, who dies to plant it down. An unstoppable Lefranchi then pushed it out to 22-0. The Sharks thankful Cavell hit the post three times in the first 40. Well, what sort of record is that? It was another bleak day for the Sharks, and fans will again be demanding answers. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. Penrith's remarkable premiership surge continues following a heart-stopping finish against Souths. The New Zealand Warriors overpowered Manly. Melbourne fought back against North Queensland, while the Panthers won 30-24. Souths had won in the last two visits to Penrith and opened the scoring within two minutes. Picked up by Andrew Hart. Preston Campbell initiated both of Luke Rooney's tries, while Joe Nalaveo used brute strength to get his hat-trick. The Panthers led 30 to 10 before a Rabbitoh revival featuring a Catavarada tearaway try and two from Luke McDougall sliced South's deficit to just six. Reese Wesser to the rescue in the dying seconds as McDougall narrowly missed out on a hat trick that could have seen extra time. At Olympic Park, North Queensland made 45 tackles to none as Melbourne leapt to a 10 nil lead after seven minutes. Try. By half time, Cowboys the Cowboys were in front 16 12, though Glenn Morrison's try past to Aaron Morgan went forward. Melbourne responded with two second half tries. Ryan Hoffman finished off a move engineered by Matt Orford to level the score. He links up on the outside with Hoffman, before the organiser broke the deadlock after 64 minutes. After a scoreless first half across the Tasman, 100-game Warriors veteran Ali Lawatiti set up Brent Webb, before Tavita Latu caught the Manly defence sipping a latte. He pinches four points! Manly fought back with two late tries, but lost for the third straight game. Penrith head the table for the first time since 1991. Charles Christian, National 9 News. A serious bout of the flu has put Andrew Johns in doubt for Wednesday's third state of origin. This afternoon, the Blues arrived in Brisbane without their captain. Bulldogs halfback Brent Sherwin on standby to replace Johns. It'd be very sad for Joey if he doesn't play on Wednesday night, but uh, he'll be there with the team and uh, we'll give him to the last moment, but uh, let's hope. Lottie DeCary is currently before a judiciary hearing in Cape Town, while Joe Roth has been sidelined by a rib injury after another winless trip to South Africa for the Wallabies. Despite scoring three tries to two, Australia was outmuscled by the Springboks 26-22. Newland Stadium has been no happy hunting ground for the Wallabies. They last won in Cape Town back in 1992, but Matt Burke put the boot in early. The fullback's field goal giving Australia a 3-0 lead before Springbok replacement fullback Brent Russell finished five phases with plenty of pace. Hasn't he got some zip the Wallabies hit back via their league recruits. Outside centre, Matt Rogers going inside to find his winger. Beautiful ball, Sailor. There's the reply. From long range, Russell launched a Springbok counter-attack featuring twice in the try of the match. Devet Barry. 
Beautiful play, Russell. To Blanche. Back to Victor Matfield. What a reply. Devet Barry sin binning for a professional foul was pounced upon by a quick thinking Phil War putting the Wallabies just three points behind. Two Lewis Coon penalty goals kicked the home team ahead by nine. Both captains carried on like prized peacocks before Joe Roth took flight, reducing the margin to four, but rib cartilage damage could sideline the winger for up to a month. Lottie Takiri faces a judiciary hearing in Cape Town over this incident. The box defence holding firm to win by four. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. In AFL, Sydney remains on track for a finals berth following a clear-cut win over St Kilda. In other games, Brisbane beat Hawthorne, Kangaroos over Melbourne, Port Adelaide defeated the Western Bulldogs, West Coast humbled Carlton, while the Swans won by 51 points. Sydney took 21 minutes to shoot straight, while St Kilda led a quarter time on the back of three goals from free kicks. And he delivers the goods. The Swans improved in the second quarter with goals from Nick Davis, Ty Canelli and Nick Fosdyke. But this Paul Kelly-like effort from Robert Harvey had the Saints marching to within four by half-time. After kicking two goals to take the lead, St Kilda ran out of path. Sydney surged when Paul Williams picked up the crumbs and Aaron Schneider snapped a long one to make it 74-54. Darren Creswell added two more goals in the final quarter as the Swans scored nine goals to three after the main break, turning a tight match into a landslide victory. He hasn't missed that. Italian Max Biaggi has claimed pole position for tonight's British MotoGP at Donington Park. Troy Bayliss is best, the best-placed Australian on the grid in sixth spot. A scary moment in final qualifying for Spaniard David De Gea, who was tossed clear of his bike he'll be starting at the back of the grid. In the Tour de France, competitors have hit the Alps for the first time. The seventh stage are testing 230 kilometer race from Lyon to Morzine. Local hero Richard Barank increased his overall lead by taking out today's leg. Australia's Michael Rogers finished fourth. In the battle for the sprinter's green jersey, another Aussie, Baden Cook, is the new man to catch. And Melbourne has won the right to host the 2007 World Swimming Championships, beating Rio and the United Arab Emirates in the final boat. I always boat. expect to lose, actually, so to, to win was very exciting. It's not sure if the good old Aussie lamingtons and chocolate crackles help convince the FINA delegates. The titles come a year after Melbourne hosts the Commonwealth Games. And, of course, Wide World of Sports will be there covering both events. Sounds good. Thanks, Ken. Coming up after the break, all the weather details. A clear sunny winter's day in Sydney. Right now in town it's 14 degrees. That's down from a high of 19 this afternoon and 18 at Richmond. Another sunny day tomorrow with a top of 19 degrees. On the synoptic chart, fine conditions should persist as the high over the state's east moves into the Tasman. Around the country tomorrow, blue skies for Brisbane and Melbourne, showers for Perth and the outlook for Sydney is a superb week of sunshine. And that's National 9 News for this Sunday. I'm Mark Ferguson. Good night.